Right, in this SY3 screencast we're going to explore quite a tricky topic. We're going to look at the concept of a political ideology. Now because this is quite difficult, my advice would be that you take plenty of notes as we go through this short video. And so that you make sure that you get down all of the key points, then you can obviously use the pause button or rewind if I'm going too quickly. So there are three main things that you need to try and make notes on whilst you watch this video. Firstly, you need to be able to define the term political ideology. Secondly, you need to be able to identify the three main characteristics that all types of political ideologies share. And thirdly, you need to be able to give some examples of political ideologies. As we can see up here, uh, this topic appeared as an exam question on the January 2013 paper. When you're answering a 15 mark question, it's really important to begin with a clear definition of the key term that the question wants you to explain, which of course in this case is political ideologies. And I would recommend that you write down and try to memorise this definition. So a political ideology is a coherent set of ideas and beliefs that provide the basis for some form of political action. So an example of political action could be the policies of political parties and these may well have been shaped by the ideas and beliefs of the members and leaders of these organisations. There are lots of ways in which we might categorise political ideologies, but the most common form of categorisation is to describe political ideologies as being located somewhere on a left to right political spectrum. One of the most important differences between right wing and left wing ideologies would be their stance on capitalism. And generally speaking, right wing ideologies tend to be much more positive much more upbeat about the virtues of a capitalist economy. Whereas left-wing ideologies tend to be much more critical of capitalism and often advocate a much bigger role for the state in managing the economy. Now in an exam question, once you've defined what is meant by a political ideology, it's really worth stressing that political ideologies of all types, left or right, tend to share three main characteristics in common. Firstly, political ideologies will offer a critique of society and this just means that they will have a relatively coherent worldview about the things that they perceive to be wrong with the existing society. Secondly, and more positively, they also have a vision of what the good society of the future might look like although this is often quite vague. And then finally, ideologies will tend to have a view about the best way of bringing about that good society. So, for example, radical ideologies might propose that we need revolutionary political and social change, whereas more moderate ideologies might favour uh, gradual and incremental change. Once you've explained the concept of a political ideology, it's then important to give some examples, and one way of doing this would be to look at the ideologies that have had an influence on the two main political parties in Britain, the Conservative Party and the Labour Party. And what I'm going to suggest is that the actions of the Conservative Party are often influenced by two main ideologies, uh, conservatism and liberalism, or more precisely neoliberalism whereas the actions of the Labour Party are often influenced by an ideology called social democracy. So let's take a very brief look at these three ideologies, starting with conservatism, which I think can be neatly summarised with this particular phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And what this means is that the conservatism ideology really emphasises the importance of conserving traditional institutions and values. 
For example, the famous uh, conservative thinker from the 18th century, Edmund Burke, argued that we should respect traditions as they embody the collective wisdom of all of the generations that have gone before us. And I think those people who are influenced by conservatism today would still be very concerned about the decline of traditional institutions, particularly the decline of marriage and the nuclear family. And their argument would be that the decline of these institutions is an underlying cause of a range of social problems. Uh, the other ideology that I think has had a big influence on the Conservative Party is classical liberalism. And this emerged as a coherent ideology in the 19th century. It then fell out of fashion for much of the 20th century until it was resurrected by the new right governments of the 1980s in Britain and America. And the term neoliberalism was used to describe the revival of this 19th century tradition of thought by people like Margaret Thatcher in Britain and Ronald Reagan in America. And this short slogan summarises the essence of neoliberalism, the state that does least is best, and this principle stems from their belief that individuals are rational beings, and this means that individuals know their own interests, and they don't need to be told what to do by an overbearing government. And the implication of this ideology is that both individuals and businesses work best when they're left alone by the state. And this is sometimes also called a laissez-faire approach. And this means that in practice, neoliberals tend to support free market policies, low taxation and a reduction in government spending. And I think this ideology is having quite a strong influence on the, the current coalition government. Now the main ideology that's had a significant impact on the actions of the Labour Party is a perspective called social democracy. And social democracy is an extremely mild or moderate form of socialism. Now socialism is a perspective that believes that unrestrained capitalism is a bad thing, that it's responsible for a variety of social evils such as the exploitation of working people, uh, the pursuit of greed and selfishness. However, unlike more radical socialists, social democrats believe that you can tackle these social evils by reforming and regulating capitalism rather than abolishing it altogether. In practice, this means that social democrats support things like a progressive taxation system, which is one where the rich pay more, and then redistributing this wealth through investment in things like public services and having a strong welfare state. And these ideas were the inspiration for the post-war Labour government that was elected in 1945 that introduced the modern welfare state and the National Health Service. Of course, there isn't always a straightforward link between political ideologies and the actions taken by parties. Uh, political parties are primarily in the business of winning votes, as represented by this ballot box, and in order to do this, they might be prepared to depart from their traditional ideologies. Um, for example, many commentators argued that under the leadership of Tony Blair, the Labour Party started to move away from social democracy and began to embrace elements of the neoliberal ideology of the Conservative Party. Right, we're almost done, but let's just briefly go back to the three objectives for this screencast before we finish. So objective number one was to define the term political ideology. So let's see if you can do that. Um, hit the pause button and see if you can remember uh, your definition of a political ideology. So well done if you remembered that a political ideology is a relatively coherent set of ideas and beliefs that form the basis for some kind of political action. The second objective, identify the three main characteristics of political ideologies. So again, let's see if you can do that. Hit the pause button, see if you can remember. 
Again, well done if you've remembered. Uh, characteristic number one, political ideologies will offer us a, a critique of what's wrong with society at the moment. Secondly, they will also have a view of what a, a good or better society would look like. And thirdly, they will also have a view about the best way of bringing about that good society. And then finally, um, objective number three, identify and describe some examples of political ideologies. So in this screencast I've mentioned three political ideologies. So see if you can remember the names of those three ideologies and what each of those ideologies stands for briefly. So hit the pause button, see if you can remember that stuff. So we had conservatism which was the ideology that wanted to protect traditional values and institutions. We had neoliberalism, which was the perspective that argued that the state that does least is best. And then finally we had social democracy, which was a moderate, mild form of socialism that wanted to reform and regulate capitalism rather than abolish it. If you're confident about the stuff that we've looked at in this screencast, then what you should do as an extension task to develop your understanding of this topic is to go online, go on the internet and have a look at some other political ideologies that have had an influence on some of the more minor political parties or on pressure groups or social movements. So for example, you could look at the Marxist ideology which has had a big impact on the radical left. Uh, you could look at feminism which was the inspiration for the women's movement. You could look at nationalism, which can be linked to debates about devolution and independence for places like Scotland. And then environmentalism, which was the inspiration for the green movement. OK, thanks very much for listening.